Cars today in 6.2, we're going to be taking a look at solving systems using substitution. For this agenda, we'll have a quick refresher on what a system is, how we've used them in the past. We'll continue to take a look at some examples, and we'll conclude with a new bit, some problems that you should be trying out to see if you understand what's going on here, and you should. And of course, if you're stuck, you can reach out with questions. Uh, for the refresher, this won't take too long. Recall that when we were working with systems in 6.1, we were being asked to graph out the systems, which was maybe two or more equations. So we would graph these out, and we would see where these two lines would intersect. Based off of that, we would say that where that intersection occurs, that is our solution. With this new section, 6.2, using substitution now, we're still gunning for that solution. We're still looking for where that occurs, but now we're using a different method to get there. So we could graph these out. That is one option. If you do decide to take that route, you'll probably get the same answer as we would if we were gonna use this new method of substitution. But substitution is a little bit more convenient because we don't necessarily have to graph out everything. Uh, some of the equations are lined up perfectly for us to use this method. So we'll see when those occur. So that's a quick refresher. We're still aiming for the solution bit, but this is a new way to approach solving systems. So let's get into the examples now that our refresher is done. Take a moment, maybe pause the video, get familiar with this problem, and then I'll walk you through it. Okay, what's up with this? This is example one. When solving a system of equations, we replace a variable with an algebraic expression. In this problem seen here, we're being asked to solve where y equals 2x and x plus y equals 9. So these are actually two equations you could graph out and find the solution for it. That's okay. The steps that I follow through here should help you through this using, again, substitution. That's the new way that we'll solve, select problems when graphing. Seems as if it's going to be a little extra. So one hint that I've sketched out here is to look for an expression where there is a variable or an isolated variable. For example, where y equals something or x equals something. In this scenario seen here, out of these two equations, which one of these is already isolated for some variable? Hopefully you're saying y equals 2x. And so what are we going to do from here? We're going to take that information, y equals 2x, and we're going to plug it in for y. So what I'm going to do here is rewrite that second equation x plus y equals 9. We acknowledge that y equals 2x already has y isolated. And so in place of y, the y that's seen here, I'm now going to rewrite that as 2x because they are equivalent. OK, does that make sense? Seem OK? So notice, instead of y, I wrote equals 2x, and now from here, I'm going to take this further and solve. So x plus 2x, I know that these are like terms, so we can rewrite that as 3x equals 9. Can we solve this further? Yes, we can. If we divide both sides by 3, this is going to claim that x equals 9 over 3, so collectively x equals 3. So that's the first part that we need to hold on to. But what else do we need? If we're looking for a solution, we need a y coordinate. So this example is kind of nice because it already has y isolated. So this next step is going to be plug back in to get your other variable. And the reason I'm saying not just to plug back in and get y 
is because sometimes we're given y first and then we would go back to solve for x. So what I'm doing here is rewriting that first equation, y equals 2x, and instead of x, I'm now putting in 3, which we got from here. So I'm substituting that in. And then 2 times 3 is claiming it's going to be equal to y. So we can say here that y equals 6. And so our solution here is 3 comma 6. Pretty simple, right? All right, let's keep this going. For example, to substitute the variable that is convenient, look for the variable that is by itself on one side of the equation. And this is already kind of building into what we saw. We're looking for variables that are already isolated out of the two equations that we have. Seeing here, since x is alone, we can substitute 5 minus y in the first equation for x, then solve as usual. So that's pretty easy. So instead of x from the first equation, I'm now putting in this 5 minus y. And then I'm eventually going to add on the y, because that was part of this equation up here. And then when it says solve as usual, just you know, do what you can to isolate y. So let's distribute the 4. We've seen that before. 4 times 5 gets us 20. 4 times negative y gets us negative 4y. Then we're adding on that y. And this all equals 8. We can simplify our y terms here. Keep the 20. Negative 4y plus y gets you negative 3y. This equals 8. Continue to isolate, or sorry, continue to isolate your variable. So we can move 20 to the other side. And then on the left, we're still left with negative 3y. So just drop that like it's hot. 8 minus 20, what does that get us? What do you think? Hopefully you're saying negative 12. We can then divide both sides by negative 3, negative 3. We can take this further and say that y equals positive 4. So notice that in this scenario, we solved for y first, which is OK. Again, we're able to do that. That's fine. So now, this final step, we're going to go back, and we still need to solve for x. So recall that second equation already has x isolated, so we can take x equals 5 minus our new term for y, which is 4. 5 minus 4 is just 1. So that's our x-coordinate, which gives us our final solution, 1 comma 4. And so we're always aiming for our solution. In this case, it's 1 comma 4. Let's keep this going. Occasionally, we'll come across a situation where there is no solution, where we're dealing with two parallel lines if these were graphed out. So in that case, they don't intersect. Uh, we'll still process through this the same way we did with the other problems. Which variable is already isolated from these two equations? Hopefully you're saying y is isolated here. And so since y is isolated, we can take that into the second equation, this 3x plus y equals 10. So let's rewrite 3x. I'll leave a little blank for y. And instead of y, we're now writing in what? What do you think? Hopefully you're saying 7 minus 3x. All right, now we can take it further, just solve for x. So let's leave 3x at the front, and then we're just adding on 7, and then we're deducting 3x, and this should be equal to 10. Can we take this further? If we combine this 3x and this 3x, since these are on the same side of the equation and they are like terms, those actually cancel. 3x minus 3x is 0, and this leaves you with just 7 equals 10. Is this a true statement? Does this make sense? No, 7 does not equal 10. So we would actually say 
there is no solution. If these equations were graphed out, they would behave like so. They would just be parallel lines, parallel lines. This is just a quick sketch, but these would not intersect. Makes sense, right? What I have here for you are gonna be some example problems. I would pause, try some of these problems out, see if you're familiar with what's going on. So pause, try these out, and I'll give you answers in a second. All of those are pretty manageable, I think. You already have variables isolated, like so. Just be careful, because this one isolates x. And your answers should be these. I hope that this video was helpful. If you're stuck on anything, please feel free to reach out. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a good day.